What's up guys? Today, I'm gonna share with you my top 10 kitchen essentials. Let's go. Item number one, a good knife, or in this case, knives, because I couldn't choose only one, a paring knife, and a chef knife. There are so many reasons why you should invest in a good quality knife. For me, number one rule is safety in the kitchen. Lots of people still think that a dull knife is safer than a sharp knife. That's where you're wrong. Now, I know no one likes to cut themselves. It's never a good time. But trust me, if you're gonna cut your fingers or your hand, it might as well be with a sharp knife for a clean cut. Because if you have a dull knife, you're just gonna butcher your whole hand. It's gonna look like you had your hand in a blender. It's gonna be messy. Never a good time with a dull knife, okay? Sharp knife is safer. Secondly, durability. Investing in a high quality knife is gonna be a lifelong investment because high quality knives are gonna be using superior materials and craftsmanship, meaning your knife's gonna stay sharper longer and also is gonna withstand a daily use. For example, a chef in a professional kitchen can use this knife every day for the rest of his life and it's gonna be good forever if you take care of it. Now you don't need to start with the most expensive, crazy Japanese knives that was probably uh, handmade at Mount Fuji in a little shack by this crazy Japanese man. Uh, you can probably get a good one for 100 bucks, to be honest. Like my first knife when I started in the kitchen was probably in that area. And you know, if you're really into it, you can always buy some more expensive knives, but you can do a lot of things with a knife uh, of that price. And yeah, knives, fun. Next up, pans. You know, you need some good pans, guys. And I think you need two kind of pans, cast iron pan, stainless steel pan. And no, I didn't forget about the non-stick pans. Don't be a loser and buy that beige ceramic pan to match your beige, boring ass life, okay? Sorry guys, I got excited. The most important reason why I use a cast iron pan is for heat retention. Once this thing is hot, it stays hot forever. You can drop a big ass ribeye stick in there. You're gonna get a beautiful crust because it's gonna remain heat. It won't drop in temperature like a stainless steel pan would. Get yourself a pan that's thicker than the ice spice. That's the secret. Cast iron pan, get one. Next up, a stainless steel pan. Very simple reason. You can use this pan for pretty much anything you can think of. You can wash this thing 15,000 times with the craziest, gnarliest, scrubby, and guess what? Your eggs won't stick. Meaning, you won't get any hot spots in your pan, which will give you more consistent cooking. So whether you're browning a steak or you're simmering a sauce, it's all gonna be Gucci. Let's talk about price range. For a stainless steel pan, anything between 100 bucks and 200 bucks should set you up for something pretty good that's gonna last you for a long time. Cast iron pan between $30 and $100. We're talking US here, baby. And that's all for the pans, folks. Moving up. Kitchen tongs and tweezers. There's a sentence I will never forget. I used to work in this restaurant, South Shore of Montreal, and the chef told me, tongs are an extension of your body. Because you know what? It's not only for tossing salad, you can use it to flip some meat. Obviously, you have some different sizes. You have the bigger ones for like a big steak or a piece of fish. You have smaller ones for more delicate and precise jobs. And you have the ones that everyone likes to make fun of, the little tweezers, you know, like the little... Now you don't obviously need all of these. If you had to choose only one in there, I would probably go with the good old classic metal tongs. But do invest at least 20 bucks to get something that's gonna last you for a long time as a one. Next item, microplanes. From zesting citrus to graining garlic or ginger or Parmesan cheese on your favorite pasta, the microplane is 100% essential in my kitchen. A standard microplane will set you back for between 15 to $20. I take one with me every time I travel, it fits in my knife roll, and it's just the best. Get one. The scraper, or also called a dough cutter, because you can use it for both. You've probably seen this in all your favorite TikTok videos. All the chefs are using these now for the main reason that scraping your knife time after time on your cutting board is very bad for your blade. So, so this will prevent this from happening. Also, gives you more surface to scoop things on your cutting board. So this is a one scoop kind of deal, you know? Boop, back in the pan. So you can find a cutter like this for about 15 to $20. If you want to level up your game from loser to internet sensation, buy yourself a scraper and scoop the onions, baby. Let's go. Next item, the spider. Weird name, it's called a spider. Why? 
because it looks like a spider web. The main use for this is to scoop things out of boiling water or a fryer. It's just a very useful tool. I like it. The spider. Next. I forgot the price. This is about 10 bucks, 20 bucks. Mine's already fucked. It happens. It's called cooking. It's called life. Next. Next item. Weird name. A chinois. It translates to Chinese and English. Why? It's not because uh, it's from China. French chef thought it looked like a Chinese hat for some reason. That's why they call it a chinois. Is it racist? Definitely. Is it gonna change? I think it's too late. It's basically the Cadillac of strainers. You can use it for something basic like straining your tortellini. But you can also use this for the finest, most delicious puree. It's a very fine mesh. You can strain your soups or puree in there to get a very nice smooth result. If you want to buy a Chinois strainer, this will set you back for about 75 to 100 bucks for a good quality one. Next. Next item, an apron. When you get into like full serious cooking mode, you know, you're gonna be there for a while. You have to prepare a feast for your family. You don't wanna get dirty, that's, you know, that's basic stuff. But also, you know what? You can fit your little tweezers in there, maybe your little sharpies. You can cross your list as you go. You can have some rags on the side, so when you're working, you have a rag on the side to be quicker. When you're rag to grab a pan, you have a rag ready. It's just, it's, uh, you know, I feel like when I have my apron on, I activate chef mode. Where to buy a nice apron? There's so many ugly fucking aprons out there, you know, like the ones with the leather straps look like either like a German sex lord from a dungeon or a US butcher, or even a barber, you know what? Also, it's like not even comfy. Who wants a big fucking leather apron? Not me. You should always get a nice, simple apron that's easy to wash. You know, most, most important thing, you need to wash your apron, you know, every time you're done cooking with it. This one is a sample from a brand that will come out very soon called Toujours Fin, always hungry. Uh, this is a sample, it's never gonna come out, so don't try to buy it. The average price for an apron like this will be around 20 to 40 dollars max. Next. Next item. A very good quality olive oil. If you've been watching my videos, you know that's all I use. I mean, except for butter, obviously, but you'll never see me use those grapeseed oil, those flax oils, those, you know, it's like, who, who wants that? Who buys that? I don't even know. Or oh, it has a higher smoke point. It's, it's not even, guys, okay, chill with the oils. Obviously, if you're gonna fry, you can use some candle oils, it's cheaper but you can pretty much do everything with olive oil. La Belle Excuse, this brand I did a collaboration with. It's the only brand I know that bring olives from the tree to a bottle on a shelf in a grocery in three months. That's the freshest olive oil you can get. So this one goes for $35 Canadian, which is probably 10 cents in US, but uh, we'll put the link for you in the description and you know, just treat yourself to something nice, nice little olive oil. Last but not least, it's been there the whole time, it's the cutting board. What is there to say about the cutting board? You know what? I think it's pretty much self-explanatory at this point. You need a cutting board in order to cut stuff, unless you want to cut on your counter like an idiot. Now there's different types of cutting boards. There's plastic, there's wood, there's rubber, there's bamboo. There's even some glass cutting boards out there. Why would you buy a glass cutting board? That's the most insane thing I can think of. Plastic cutting boards, no bueno. You'll end up eating some microplastic, shit some Legos, and ultimately probably die from cancer. So let's not do that. A wood cutting board, absolutely, that's what you want. You want a good one though. So you see this one? They have the grain side up, meaning it's the hardest part of the wood. Meaning your knife won't go inside the cutting board. You won't have bacteria growing in your cutting board. It's gonna stay clean like this forever. A cutting board like this would set you back for over 300 bucks. But you know, if you take good care of it, which is only bit of oil to keep it nice and hydrated. You should be good for forever with this cutting board. And also it looks good on your counter, so drop that money, baby. And that's a wrap on my top 10 kitchen essentials. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video. Let me know in the comments which item you use in your kitchen every day. If you made it this far into the video, please subscribe to the channel and help us reach 100,000 subscribers. Let's get there together. Let's share the love, share the cooking, share the passion, and we'll see you on the next episode of Always Hungry.